get crowded here. Yep. Um, thinking of taking a, a round two with this um, drive. And um, already cleaned it out completely, and then I found a few issues and fixed them, but it still doesn't work. And basically, you can put this drive. Um, floppy disk drive problems into two categories. There are some mechanical and usually those are they will cause total non-operation of the drive or um, continuous or intermittent um, yeah, mainly read, read issues. And then you can other categories you can have a, a, something wrong with the electronics I mean, the, the, but then usually it's <laughs> also, there you can have continuous or intermittent um, uh, usage issues, like read issues mainly. Or um, it can be completely dead, so the computer doesn't recognize it at all. Um, or the stepper motor is dead, so it doesn't react um, to obvious input. And, uh, or the rotation motor doesn't rotate. Uh, also, you can have uh, this kind of weird stuff where it seems to be trying to read something, but there's no data coming to the computer. And then, the <laughs> most fatal one, which doesn't actually happen that often, it's smoke <laughs> coming from the electronics, so then, yeah, then you know that it's completely dead. Or, yeah, something very strange is, is um, gone wrong. Um, yeah, I've been bad. It took so I, I took one pass at this, and and um, mainly through, yeah, as I said, cleaning and then fixing a few issues that I also showed in this video, and then um, it still didn't work. And um, now I'm going to take another pass at it after I've actually spent a little bit more time on YouTube watching other people struggling with various different drives. Um, so anyway, let's have a look at the drive and. Um, Go through it. So, anyway, here's the drive. Let's take a little bit of a round tour. Just as a reference. And the first thing to do when we're going to take this off is we need to take, take this face plate off so that has two tabs here so I can actually so press it carefully down and then it pops out and you have to keep an eye on the button that's now it's jammed in there but when we move to the next face you need to make sure you don't lo lose that <laughs> that's a bad tendency of dropping that and then if you want to um, take this cover off then there's three screws in the mold and you can see that there's a aluminium tab that comes out and it should be on top of this um, hollow here and when, that'll be, that's an important note to make because when you put it usually when you're trying to put it back together again then this this um, outcrop here ends up on the wrong side and that's totally misaligned but um, let's uh, unscrew that. So, unscrew. And there's um, this screw on the side. Try and keep my hands out of the way. And then just turn it around to the other side. careful one actually takes the button and puts it into place and then one can actually um, pull the drive mechanism out Oh, there. Oh. So it's 
this tin thing that gets caught on things. But anyway, that's out now. So let's do it. The side. And there, here we have the drive in the open, which is, makes it a lot easier to deal with. So, anyway, let's have a little bit of a look at it. So, we have a um, floppy drive connector. Um, yeah, uh, retro computer specific. Well, in this case, the Amiga 2000 specific. And then we have the power connector. And then we have this um, jumpers here, and um, this drive is supposed to be used as DFO uh, zero on a flat cable. And um, if you put two of these drives and you have a non-twisted cable or just a continuously flat cable, then you need to actually re-jumper this for the second drive. But since this is the main uh, main drive, then you don't need to actually mess with that with the, with the settings. Uh, then we have the stepper motor, which is here, and that's to move the um, uh, head assembly. And then we have a rotation motor, which of course is to rotate the disc. And associated um, electronics. So it's kind of like separated. So this is this. This I would assume is the complete motor. Ah, okay, there's a lead there, but it's like a motor assembly, motor drive assembly. And then this is the rest of the electronics. So the two two separate boards. And as you see, that the unit is quite clean. So I actually did spend quite a lot of time um, cleaning it the first round I made. And um, so let's move on. So if you want to be able to clean this better, then I suggest that we you you remove this cage here, and that's actually quite easy. You just go in here, and then there's one screw here in the corner. It's like a kind of tab screw. Then you take that away. And with a little bit of fiddling and careful movements, you, you can remove that. So now it's actually much more expensive to actually look at things and, and um, for example, clean it up. Anyway, so in many in, ah, online information and stuff, there, there, there's lots that are very um, keen on um, swapping out capacitors. And uh, different drives have different capacities. I'm going to put a link to quite a, uh, a good web page where they, where the person has listed the capacitors on each, uh, you know, different types of drives and what what um, capa uh, capacity they are and what um, voltages and what, what the IDs are, the location. But I mean, I, I, what I did is I I said, oh, I'm not really thinking my problem is that, but then I thought I'd swap them out anyway. So I um. I, t I took them out and I measured them and they were within tolerances and the, the right um, capacity. But then I thought, ah, what the heck, so I put in new ones. So in this case we have one there, one there, one there, and one here that I swapped out. But it, it made no no um, difference to the operation, so it's still working as badly as it did before. So, anyway... Um, what we could do now is to, uh, if, if you're sure you don't have an alignment issue, then um, don't <laughs> do this immediately, but since I know I pretty much have a guarantee to have an alignment issue, and I have something I would like to show, so um, if you want to remove this top head, then you can take a screwdriver, and you can Unscrew that screw. And unscrew it. Other screw. It. And then you can actually lift out the whole holder spring mechanism. 
and that gives you access to the top head, as you see you get access to the flat cable, and you can disconnect it and remove it. And one of the issues that was on this drive when I started working with it, let's see if I can show it, is that this here, this sort of like springy assembly, stamped assembly, it should be like, based on the videos that I watched online, it should be flat. And in, in my case, this second ring here was like curved outwards quite a lot. So I've been trying to straighten it. Well, I don't know if I've done such an incredibly good job of that. That was, that was issue number one on, on this drive. Um, the uh, other issue on this drive was related to the stepper mower. So, let's see if I can show it. So the stepper motor is here and has this axle here and then it has this kind of weird peg, I'm going to call it a metal peg, that contacts with this groove and it's glued here and then it's glued over here on the other side. This, this actually had come disconnected from the base. Uh, so, um, so what I did is I put some super glue and put it back as best I could. So now, now it's permanently fastened again, but it was loose and I had not it took me a very long time to actually realize that that wasn't, because it wasn't like sliding off completely, it was only like jittering on that, so we're getting a very bad place. Then the other thing is that when you, you look at this head assembly and, and you think it's supposed to be like held between this spring and, and this bottom area with the pin, um, it was very much like loose. So what I did is I took the. Uh, let's see if I can get it into the cap. So I took that. Just to un it's just to unscrew that one screw, and then you can lift lift this whole spring uh, metal piece out, and then you can bend it straighter, and then you can uh, screw it back in again. So now it's pressing these two parts, uh, the bottom assembly part. And then the spring, it's, it's now hard against this, so, so now you actually, um, I can just show it, so, ah, it's still a bit janky, but that's because I'm doing it too hard, but uh, this, this is kind of now better coordinated, the, the axle position here, and the actual head assembly, because this whole assembly, the bottom head and the top head, it moves as a unified unit. So, and then the last thing of interest, well, oh, not the last thing, one of the last things of interest, uh, is the zero track sensor, and this is this circuit board here. And it actually has a, you know, the easiest way to show it is to actually take, since I've lost the line everything in this drive, so can just take that apart. So here we have a sensor, which is the zero track sensor, and then coming out of this head assembly you have this here sticking out, a little piece of plastic. And then as it moves backwards and forwards then it goes in between there and then it cuts the, the um, uh, photovoltaic signal, uh, the light signal go going across here, and then it knows that it's in, in the, at the zero track position. And sometimes you get dust accumulation in the holes of the sensor. So I'm actually going to double clean this uh, moving forward to actually make sure I don't. You know, there definitely isn't any dust in there. I did clean it quite thoroughly. I'm going to give it another go. So, and then the next point of interest is the um, track position um, adjustment, and that's the motor. So, 
If you look very carefully at the motor, you can see that it has two screws holding it into, holding it in place, and you can. Oh, I think you can just make out that it, you can see that it's not just one hole. It's kind of a kind of an adjustable area. For, so actually, this here, you use this when you turn the motor. If you if you loosen those two screws and turn the motor, then you, you actually set the um, read head or read right head more accurately on where the exact magnetic track should be. So that's that's an adjustment. In in some videos, depending on what kind of a stepper motor you have, this end holder here that pushes the axle holds the axle in the inside the stepper motor. It seems to be an issue, but this model, the way this end cap is held, and I really doubt that that's um, that's probably not an issue since it's. Actually, I can't move the actual stepper motor axle backwards and forwards. But that, well, that was shown in some videos. That not not for this drive type, but for other drive types. And that, that had such a bad back holder here that <laughs> the axle was wobbling. Oh. So, a little bit about lubrication, I suggest one uses like this white lithium grease and then you should have a reasonable lubrication on the on the spindle here and then on the um, head track tracks so that it actually moves nicely but don't don't overdo putting, putting the grease on or, or any oil and stuff it just gets messy so back together again and also loosened up as you can see now you can I can easily rotate the stepper motor also. And this I put back the zero track sensor I put back to where best I could and then uh, okay a little bit closer look at the drive select so in when it's this configured in this way then it's for the um DFs oh DF0 and now I want to change it to so this drive can be the second drive on a flat floppy disk drive so not the cable that's twisted so then we need to actually move this jumper over, over um, to the first and ah yeah depending on how you look at it but Anyway, I'll swap it and then I'll show where it's done. But now it's for um, uh, DF0. No, when I change it, it'll be for DF1 on a flat floppy cable. So, swapped it over. And now in this position, this one should respond to DF1 being addressed on the flat floppy cable. So, in the lab. And look, I have succeeded. Let's see if I can. Yeah. So this is Omega test kit with mostly green. <laughs> Actually, I have a confession to make. I'm. I don't seem to be very good at fixing <laughs> floppy disk drives, but um, this is the one of the best results that I've been able to get with all all the work and adjustment I've been doing. So what I've been doing now is I took the drive that I showed and um, I joined it up with a with a fellow drive selection of port. So well it was a drive but now I've completely taken it apart. And then I um yeah I, I kind of like swapped parts in between the two and balanced and found out and then, so the, this one now is the, the like combination of parts that seem to be seem to be the um, the best parts that I can find. And, but still, the uh, yeah, this has actually no fatal read error 
and most of it is green so and then of course the my discs aren't the best because I've been using them for lots of testing of the of the disk drive so so this is this is one of the uh, what I consider more better discs that I have around hanging around um, this this one I think the the one that actually had the diagnostic program I think I've must admit that I pretty much ruined this. And then I had an accident with this one that I stole the upper head from the other drive and I still succeeded in um, when I was working with it over time changing parts and stuff I actually ended up sadly getting it caught into something and and it damaged the top head so so the, the top head on this <laughs> again is not in that good shape and I can't really afford to to spend more money on on um, non-working parts drives because I actually found out that they, uh, they're the other one I had was quite badly corroded. This one, this one that I have here, the one that the, was the donor, ultimate donor. So I don't know. So what I did is that, just for the future reference, is that I actually bought one that was marked as known good, so I purchased one, and I've actually tested this one. And it, uh, it c it can also show a few few red like retry um, uh, sectors, but uh, it's it's yeah it's cleaner than the, uh, the drive is clear. It creates cleaner, and and as I said, my discs aren't aren't a hundred percent proof. But anyway, not to make this a completely useless uh, useless event, I'm actually going to um throw in some pointers that if somebody else is working on this type of a drive. Uh, they can have those hints from me because they, they will they will be useful anyway. Even if and maybe maybe it could succeed better than what I've done. So um, let's have a look at the um, the first thing to look at is the stepper motor with its worm axle and on um, one. And deviation I found is that the original draw I was working on, and this is very tricky to see. You, you can't, I won't be able to show it, and this hasn't got one. But there's a uh, ball bearing one that needs to be at the end of this this axle when it's pu when when it's pushed into its location, and that was missing actually in one of the drives. So I had two drives. So one of them had it, and the other one didn't. So I'm assuming that the the one that didn't have it, it actually got lost. And um, there seems to be a little bit of different wear in, in these worm, this axle. So I took the one that had the <coughs> the, the stepper motor didn't look the best, but the the actual this axle looked that had the least uh, wear. And, um, let's see if I can find something else to comment. Yeah, this one. So this here is the the cover for the motor, and on um, this screw, it actually when you when you unscrew it, you have to go clockwise. So not anti-clockwise. You have to go clockwise to unscrew. And then the other important thing is, it seems like that there's a there's a possibility that it will gather dirt in here, various kinds. So I actually took this out on both drives and I cleaned it out and blew away the. Um, well, I'll show you the inside part. The cap covers this this here. So then I um, actually cleaned that out as best I could. Also. And then the other thing is that it, that it was important is that. This is the axle that goes through, which actually. Uh, oh, so it's some extra bit. Cool. So this one here. Um, this ha It seems like there, there may or may not be two very thin shims at the at the bottom here. So you have to be very careful when you pull this out. Um, 
bolts basically from this side that when you pull it out that you don't leave the shims there and then they get lost so that you make sure you, you get those shims and you put them as I said one drive had them and the other one didn't so I don't know what, what's happened and it's very important to clean and lubricate this axle and try and lubricate the um, re-lubricate those bearings because the one of the you know one of the drives the, the motor was very tough to turn even if it didn't have a disc drive or a disc in it so I actually took it all, the whole thing apart oiled it up or lubricated it and put it back together again then it, then it oh, span okay so that was that hint let's see was there any other yes there was um, This is related to the head. Ah, there we go. Here we go. So this is the bottom head. So I, I took the other one apart. And then it goes through the ac this axle goes through those two bushings there. And, and that turned out to be very actually on both drives this was very sticky very sticky like it wasn't so it's very imp actually relatively important to take this axle out and re-lubricate uh, to get into those bushings and re-lubricate re them and then put it back together and that you have to do with by um, removing the electronics board and um, it's actually very easy you, you, you um, there's, there's two flat cables for the heads, one for the zero um, track sensor, and then the stepper motor, which is also just to unplug. And then there's two screws that you take out, and then you need to disconnect it from the motor part, which is that connector. Also important to do is to lubricate with a contact uh, cleaner all these connectors before you put it back in. But underneath this then you get access to the um, I don't actually have it screwed in. Ah! Here you can see. But you get access to the underneath and then you just unscrew that one screw and then the, the axle is here so then you can actually pull it out and then you can lubricate the bushings and put it back together. So that was that. Let's see if there was anything else. I, also, I already discussed the adjustments the, when we went through the through the drive before I actually went went into this and um, that's pretty much what you do. I thought I would show how to use um, Amiga test kit to do it, but the, the, there wasn't really for me when I was working on it. There wasn't actually one pure sequence of events that would lead to ultimate success. It seems like one needs to oh I can actually jump out of here. One needs to um, let's see F3 so you, you, you need to jump between um, signal test well yeah actually signal test is useful because you can force it to start the mode or you can force it to stop so that's basically there is test point two with three um, solder points uh, where I think two of them are for the heads and then one is ground but I, I, I didn't use that ultimately I, I found it not really to be that informative so I've, I've been going based on the program and then there's read test haven't used write test and then head calibration test it's, um, we could actually have a look at that and you need to jump between those like when you think you've adjusted it then uh, you you move on and find out you haven't got it working and then you readjust and then you jump between the programs and you balance different things and you adjust the uh, you know the uh, zero track and then you adjust the stepper motor and then you adjust the head and then everything goes to hell and then you start from the beginning again and oh it's it's um 
yeah, it's it's it, it's not that fun. But anyway, here we can see this is reading uh, uh, track zero, uh, lower head, upper head, and you see the upper head has a problem reading, um, and then it comes and goes. By the way, when you have this open out like this, um, it is actually sus sus it it can be exposed to um, uh, radio interference. So, like, don't have your mobile sitting right next to it when you're trying to adjust it, because then you're going to get really weird. And I actually have a lamp that I was using to, you know, with a magnification on it, to um, to lo look at the drive, and that was disturbing the drive. <laughs> And I'm a bit wondering if my filming lights are, are actually um, creating RF. Because this is covered with a box. Yeah. Ah, uh, I showed it previously. So it's, it's covered with a grounded metal box, Faraday cage. So, And then the other thing is that the uh, zero track sensor is, an, uh, is um, an optical sensor. So there is a possibility that, um, that um, you know, reflective light will. Um, mess up the sensor and, and, and give it wrong information so um, yeah so no light and no radio interference um, would be anything so uh, oh, I can just have a few comments about test kit um, you can see both heads or only the bottom of the top one and then if it's dots then it's it's right it's reading the right data if X comes up, it's failed to read. Um, like here, so let's see if I push it forward a bit. One, two, three, four. Uh, now it's very quite well. And it seems like the, yeah, from in my case, the when you're in the like zero track plus 10, then it seems to be a bit more unstable when it comes to alignment. But you get out into the larger uh, tracks then it seems to be better but if it says minus here then it means that it's um it's reading from a track that's lower than than what it uh, what you're trying to address and then if it says plus then it's reading a track that is uh, above the track that it's trying to read and that, that you you can have this where the lower head is saying dot 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 and the upper track can be showing well, the upper head will be saying plus plus plus, and that means that the upper head is ahead of the um, the lower head. So then you need to push it back. And um, well, when did that happen? My, my poor monitor changes channels without warning. So I can get it back. Or the system has crashed. This this motherboard needs some attention, <laughs> and it and it's probably not not helping to have it open like this either. Oh. I don't know what's going on with this. I'll cut out this bit, but it, it yeah. Let's see if I can get it stabilized. It's this. It's the monitor. It's not really anything else. What else to say about this? So yeah. So I, I was going to make a nice long video about using Omega Test Kit and the different functionalities, but um, I would say that each drive is a bit individual, and I don't know if there's. As I said, I didn't find any workflow that was 100%. It, it, it's like you, 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 you select the best flow, workflow for the drive in question, <laughs> whatever that. Is and then you um, iterate. I mean, the the general outline is something like um, adjust the end stop so you get a zero track uh, found dot dot dot, and and that you might need to adjust the stepper motor to get the dot dot dot. And once you have that in place, then theoretically speaking, you would then adjust the top head, but. 
sometimes I found that you need to go to the track 30 and then and try and do the adjustments there. So if you do the adjustments in, at zero track, then you will often find that the adjustment at th track 30 is, is way off. So it's a kind of a compromise moving backwards and forwards and trying. But um, is this drive usable? Yeah. Uh, I, I suppose I've seen worse, but it, it's not perfect. And now that I met, I it, my mistake, I kind of messed up the top head. I don't know what it got caught on. I mean, I, but I think there's a lot of these units where the top head has been ruined because of some like click clock clock, you know, some kind of a yeah mechanical movement or the disc or something, and then it just gets caught on it and then it twists it. So, so ah, a bit sad, but I. I tried again to straighten it out as best I could. But as I said, I'm not going to... I decided not to invest anymore in um, used drives. The first one I got a, as, a, as a free freebie with something else I bought. And then the second one I did actually buy. And then, um, yeah, now that I messed this one it up, I, I don't know if I want to continue. I, I invested in a, in a so-called known good one. Um, theoretically good but but I did test it and it seems to be good enough uh, uh, diskettes can be in whatever shape so it, yeah it, it's it's not a <laughs> not an exact science but but it'll do for me because I, I'm going to have this um, USB floppy disk drive plus this um, this physical drive so, so it'll be it'll be two drives and, uh, and the physical drive will probably It'll, it'll do me the one that I purchased, even if it's not 100% perfect. Uh, can I recommend fixing drives? Um, or adjusting them? I don't know, if, if one had a working drive and it was getting bad, uh, like, more, like systematically getting worse, not working when it comes to reading and stuff, then I probably would recommend uh, to go through this adjustment procedure, because I think one will probably succeed on. Oh, and then definitely the, l the l lubrication, like the this um, worm axle should be well lubricated. And, and uh, yeah, and then um, the motor uh, axle I showed, and then the axle on which the head moves backwards and forwards. And um, so something, and then keeping it clean and stuff. But, uh, I don't know, buying known bad drives. Because the, the second drive I bought that it actually had a, a motor problem and, and a stepper driver control problem. It was a, 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 quite probably the electronics messed up. So that was, the, that was this board. And of course, as you see, it's only got two chips and a bunch of um, surface mounts and no drawings. So I don't know. Yeah, likelihood of getting it fixed is. However, these seem to be you can swap these out. I mean, even if it's not exactly the same, if it's the same drive, uh, if it's the same drive model, then uh, even if the control, the electronics board is not exactly the same, you can still swap these out and they, they will work. So they seem to be com they they're kept the compatibility. But the, this one was in pretty bad shape. Both uh, it had had motor control problem. Bottom head was not working, and I think it had a stepper. So I wasn't able to revitalize the. So, so I basically used parts and built. But um, yeah. I mean, if of course, if you have access to drives, like somebody gives you five drives or something, then you might be able to get together maybe two from them. So you know, I'm just going to keep this as a spare. I think it works good enough for that. Maybe put it in an Amiga 500 or something if, if, if need be, and um, call it a day on, on on this initiative. So yeah, I would have liked to be able to present a a very logical workflow in um, Amiga test kit and to show it show how to adjust the drive but 
Oh, I spent too many hours doing it. And it really hard hard to say there would be a point because if even if I should, this was iterative. I just went through the process and went through the process and went through the process and sometimes it went towards being worse and then sometimes it went through doing better and then when I got it better then something happened and then it got all screwed up. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I still hope you enjoyed this one and got some information that's that's useful for um, if you try and renovate one of these drives and um, yeah, see you in the next one. Oh well, run it again. A little bit better about varying results so this is what will happen when you take the same disc and run it multiple times.